Welcome to Sliver and Bite TV. Let's make leek, potato and vuliti soup. If you would like to see the condensed version of this recipe, click the banner above or search Just a Sliver right here on Sliver and Bite TV. Let's get started. Make sure you have a large enough pot to be able to take at least five liters of liquid. I'm going to start by adding in the butter and a little bit of oil, ready for when I put in the leek and garlic. It is easy to get carried away with how much butter and oil to put in. Less is more because you really only just need to have a light coating over the leek. I've done majority of the chopping, however, I did want to show you how I cut leek. It can be a little tricky, just because it can be a little messy. I'm cutting across the leek, roughly four centimeters in length. Using a small paring knife going down the center. This is where it can get messy. Just like a regular onion, this is made up of little rings. In actual fact, this is even thinner. They're thin like paper. So as little movement as possible is best. I'm cutting this lengthwise about one centimeter in thickness. And due to the circumference of the onion, I'm cutting about three times, but obviously it'll be different each onion. Now to roughly chop the garlic. No need to do a pretty job on this as the whole mixture is going to be blended anyway. I'm putting in four cloves. However, if you love your garlic, you can definitely put in additional. Potato and leek soup is notorious for being quite delicate. So putting in additional garlic may overpower the soup. I have the pot on at roughly 120 degrees Celsius because we want this to come to a bit of a sizzle because we want to saute our garlic and our leek. Just going to peel and dice up the last potato. We do want to be conscious of how large a pieces that we are putting into the pot when we bring it to the boil, because if you have some large and some small, they won't cook evenly. So I've opted for five centimeters squared. The butter is starting to sizzle. So give that a mix just to melt down the last of the butter. And now that that's sizzling, we can put in the leek. Coat the leek in all of the butter and oil. And at this stage, give it a good toss around to really split the layers up. I'll speed this part up because you don't need to watch onion wilt for four minutes. Once you've sauteed the leek for four to five minutes, make a little well, and then you can pop in the garlic. 
I'm going to add just a little bit more oil just to help that caramelize just a tad. Just adding my thyme. And a little pepper and salt. Again, no need to go overboard because you can always salt and pepper to taste when serving. And then mix that through. The smell at this point, intoxicating. It's similar to when you go to a barbecue and you've got the brown onion on the barbecue. Oh, it is just the best smell. So that's been on for a further five minutes. Give it another stir and judgment call as to whether or not you're happy with the caramelization of it. Of course, we don't want it too dry. All in all, I would have had the garlic and the leek on for roughly 15 minutes. Now add in your potato. And vegetable stock. and give that a light mix, making sure that you do have enough coverage and depth so that the potatoes can bounce around a little bit when it comes to the boil. Lid on and that will be on the boil for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, the length of time that you boil your potatoes for depends on how large you cut them. While that is boiling away, I'm going to prepare the croutons. I'm going to bouge it up a little by using sourdough. So just cutting thick pieces and then pulling out the inside of the bread, the soft part. And don't you worry, that crust is not going to waste. <laughs> I'm going to butter it and put a little salt on it as a little snack. I'm going for more of a rustic look with the croutons today. In a saucepan, I've got some butter and some vegetable oil. So I'm going to bring that to the boil and drop in my bread. Because I'm using straight butter and not using ghee, you can see the milk solids forming on the top. It's okay, I won't be reusing this oil, so I'm fine for it to be a little dirty. Drop in your sourdough. Make sure that there is enough room to move around. You don't want to overcrowd it. Make sure you are watching this vigilantly. It'll go from zero to a hundred in a microsecond. As you'll see, I just picked up one of the sourdough pieces and it was still not cooked. But then before too long, as you can see, it is already gone brown super quick. And once they're brown on one side, you can turn them over and fry the other side. They'll be done quite quickly. So have some paper towel into a bowl and then you can pull the fried croutons out and drain into that paper towel.
Now it's back to the soup. Going to check whether or not the potatoes are ready. You could use the wooden spoon and put a bit of pressure on one of the potatoes to see if it cracks down the center. I'm going to use a fork and just lightly stab it and if it was ready it should split. Not ready. So back on with the lid for a further five minutes. Time to blend. You can use a blender, you can use a food processor. I am going to use a stick blender. I found the best way is to be as straight up as you can and just do a series of small whizzes just to rake up all of the contents and then you can actually put it on for a little period of time. And be sure not to over mix it. You don't want just this viscose mess. I'm going to do a little taste test and mix test just to make sure that the consistency is okay. It's still a little lumpy. So now I'm going to add in the veluti. You can see that recipe right here on YouTube. This will thicken it up a little more. And I'm using veluti instead of cream. It's time to plate up. going to ladle in quite a generous portion of soup. Dot some sour cream. Sprinkle on some chives. and then place on some rustic croutons. A little more pepper. And to make it look restaurant quality, a little drizzle of olive oil. Certainly a winter warmer, but definitely good any time of the year. It's a wonderfully delicate soup, but with the little added extras, it certainly packs a punch. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.